In this video, I'm going to be describing the testing of complement fixation and how that test works. There's a lot of players involved with CF, so first I'm going to explain how all the players work together and then how testing is performed. Similar to immunodiffusion, there are the players of antigen and antibody, and they are either going to bind or not bind. There will definitely not be any binding if those antibodies are not there. From the name complement fixation, there's also complement involved. And put simply, complement is a series of proteins that react to lice things. In our bodies, that can be for lysing bacteria. In the test, red blood cells are our indicator. And then that last component is red blood cells, specifically sensitized red blood cells. They have a protein called hemolysin attached to them. And that'll, that hemolysin protein allows complement to lice the red cells. So how is testing set up? The complement fixation is a two-day test. So on day one, what is added is the antigen, the antibody, and the complement. And then those three components will sit overnight. And then on day two, the test is read by adding the red blood cells. Now the test is read based upon lysis or no lysis. So if antigen in a positive test, if antigen and antibody are present, then complement will bind to that antigen antibody complex. If all the complement is bound to that antigen antibody complex, then the red cells can be added. And even though they're sensitized with hemolysin, the red cells will not be lysed or broken apart by the complement. So in that case, there was no lysis or lysis was inhibited and that makes the test positive. So an inhibition of lysis is a positive complement fixation test. Whereas if the patient does not have serum antibodies against the antigen of our pathogen, then there is no antigen antibody binding. Complement does not bind to any antigen antibody complex, so complement is floating around and free. When those red cells are added on day two, the complement munches down on those red cells and lysis occurs. So Lysis occurs, that's a negative reaction in complement fixation. So it seems pretty straightforward, and hopefully that's a straightforward understanding of what's going in complement fixation. And I'll try to find a picture of what a plate looks like. The, the challenge of complement fixation is I've listed all these players, all these components, the antigen, the antibody, the complement, the red blood cells, the actual liquid that all this test is being performed in. And I think of each of those things as a dial. So more versus less red blood cells, more versus less complement, more versus less antigen, more versus less antibody. When you start to vary the concentration of these things, the, con the, the testing can become quite complex. So if you think about it, if you had too much complement, well, maybe there was antigen antibody binding, but you had too much complement, the complement's still gonna go rice, lice cells. So then you may have a false negative because the cells were lysed, that's a non-reactive. Oh, there weren't any antibodies in there. When in fact there were, there was just abundant complement. Or on the flip side, if you had too many red cells, there's not enough complement to lyse all those red cells. You may think, oh, there wasn't, lysis was inhibited. There must have been antibodies present here versus was the complement able to lyse all of the red cells that were present in there. So those are two examples where the concentration of those reagents, the ingredients in the test, how they can alter your test and what's going on in your test. So those are all components that are taken into account when running a complement fixation test. Now, again, my role at IMI, we make the antigen and a positive control associated with it. That is the testing methodology of complement fixation.